Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. It's a day to survey the damage and clean up from yesterday's tornado outbreak in central Kentucky. We'll show you the damage and talk to a woman who was thrown from her home. A much calmer afternoon and evening taking shape across the bluegrass day, but I'm tracking additional rounds of showers and thunderstorms. I'll detail the heavy rain threat coming up. President Obama goes to the Pentagon for meetings with his top military commanders and his national security team. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. Six tornadoes are now confirmed from yesterday's severe weather outbreak. The National Weather Service says two EF1 tornadoes hit Bath County, and one is confirmed in Bourbon, Harrison, and Scott counties. Plus, an EF0 tornado hit Owen County. The National Weather Service is also looking at Mason County, where high winds knocked over three semis and gas station pumps near the AA Highway in Maysville. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast, and Chris, it's a much calmer day. Yeah, much better out there across the region, and you really need to get outside and take advantage of it because in the coming days, we're going into a pattern, Jennifer, that will feature additional rounds of showers and thunderstorms, and I think a lot of rain is going to fall in the coming days. Let's soak up what we have, and that is a much, much better afternoon. As you mentioned, those temperatures upper 60s to low 70s throughout the region with a mix of sun and clouds for out and about this evening. Temperature quickly dropping with dry air in place from the mid 60s toward 50 degrees by 11 o'clock this evening with a little high cloud cover beginning to show up on the western horizon by that time. Life First Alert Defender has a clean sweep across the region for now with beautiful high pressure that's in control of the weather. Unfortunately, it's a very weak high. The cold front that caused all the problems yesterday with the severe weather and the tornado outbreak is now to our south, putting the brakes on. It's getting ready to lift back to the north. Already seeing clouds developing across western Kentucky showers not too far away from St. Louis, and that's the beginning of a very soggy setup. Heavy rain and thunderstorms on the way, Jennifer, not only for Thursday, for Friday, but really throughout the extended forecast period. I'm talking about the potential for very heavy rains when I come back here in just a bit. Thank you, Chris. A lot of people are cleaning up from yesterday's storms, including Bourbon County, where an EF1 tornado touched down, throwing a woman from her home in Paris. WKYT Sam Smith continues our first alert weather coverage in our top story at four. Here on the Vine Street area of Paris is where most of the structural damage reports came from. The fire department reports 15 to 20 buildings severely damaged. People living in those homes lost power and natural gas lines had to be shut off because of leaks. Those impacted were evacuated and put up in a local hotel or stayed with friends and family. A National Weather Service team surveyed the damage in the neighborhood. They confirmed an EF-1 tornado touched down along Vine Street. Only one injury was reported. A woman was sucked out of her home. She was in her kitchen at the time and landed on her porch with debris lying on top of her. She only walked away with stitches in her lip, but her home was destroyed. I don't have a house. I don't, ha I don't have a home. They just wiped it clean. It's gone. The National Weather Service team thinks the tornado was on the ground for about a quarter mile. In Bourbon County, Sam Smith, WKYT. People living in that neighborhood cannot return to their homes until power is restored. In neighboring Scott County, the National Weather Service used a drone to determine an EF1 tornado touched down in stamping ground. The tornado ripped porches off some structures and tore up sheds. Along with strong winds, large hail was also reported. Some people say the hail near Georgetown was the size of a baseball. Coming up on WKYT News at 4.30, you'll hear from a man whose home was damaged. In Harrison County, a tornado touched down south of Cynthiana. Most of the damage is along U.S. 27 and U.S. 62. Power has been restored to the thousands of people who were left in the dark last night. Coming up on WKYT News at 4.30, you'll hear from a man whose barn was damaged. And remember, you can always track storms even when you're away from your TV. Take control of an interactive First Alert Defender radar on WKYT.com and zoom into your neighborhood. You can download the WKYT app for your iPad or smartphone. It'll connect you to several weather tools, including live radar. We're working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott is in the newsroom with a look at some more of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber.
Hello, Jennifer. A University of Kentucky football player pled not guilty to rape charges this afternoon in court. 20 year old Lloyd Tubman was arrested yesterday and charged with first degree rape. Police say it happened in a residence hall on campus last week. He has been suspended indefinitely from the football team. Coach Mark Stoop says he is very concerned about the allegations and all parties involved. Coming up on WKYT News at 5 and 6, we will tell you what the judge ordered Tubman to do and when he will be in court. Court again. We are learning more about a Scott County crash that killed three people and sent another three to the hospital. The coroner tells us that 22 year old Trevor Spencer, his three year old son Skyler Spencer, and 29 year old Corey Wilcoxon were all pronounced dead at the scene. It happened about 3 p.m. yesterday on Stamping Ground Road at Duval Station Road. The coroner tells us that wind and rain from a storm played a role in that crash. There's no word yet on the other victims who were injured. We'll have details on a fundraiser for one of those victims coming up on WKYT News at 430. That is a look at just some of the news that's in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. The most in the United States has died. That's according to a Dallas hospital spokesman. Thomas Eric Duncan arrived in Dallas September 20th from Liberia and became sick a few days later. He was sent home after an initial visit to the emergency room, but taken back to Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital a week and a half ago and had been kept in isolation since. Officials say 10 people had direct contact with Duncan while he was contagious. The first American flown back to the U.S. for treatment of Ebola this summer has donated blood to the most recent one to return from West Africa with the disease. The Nebraska Medical Center says it called Dr. Kent Brantley yesterday to tell him his blood type matches that of Ashoka Mukpo, a freelance video journalist who arrived at the medical center Monday. It says Mukpo will receive the transfusion today. President Obama is going to the Pentagon to discuss the U.S.-led battle against ISIS fighters. He's talking to top commanders and his national security team. Airstrikes are ramping up in a northern Syrian city ISIS is trying to capture. And there are new questions about whether the campaign is working. Craig Boswell has the latest from the White House. President Obama is meeting with top military commanders at the Pentagon to assess the campaign against ISIS. U.S.-led airstrikes are hitting militant targets in Kobani, a key Syrian border city teetering on the verge of an ISIS takeover. Airstrikes alone are not going to do this, not going to fix this, not going to save the town of Kobani. The administration says a trained and equipped ground force in Syria must be put in place. There's also greater focus on neighboring Turkey and its role in the coalition. Clearly. Uh, on their border. This is of enormous concern to Turkey, and they recognize that. The retired U.S. general leading the coalition effort is headed to Turkey to discuss how Turkish forces might intervene. This will not be the first conversation, however, between U.S. officials and Turkish officials about how they can be a part of this effort. In a new CBS News poll, just 40 percent of those surveyed said they approved of the job President Obama is doing handling the situation with ISIS militants. 51 percent disapproved. The campaign against ISIS in Iraq began two months ago. Airstrikes inside Syria are now entering the third week, with well over 250 bombing runs in both countries. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. A day after asking for help identifying a masked English-speaking ISIS fighter, the FBI says it's received dozens of emails and phone calls. Your morning cup of coffee could get more expensive again. We'll tell you why and by how much coming up in WKYT Money Watch. And Walmart will be cutting health care benefits for some of its workers. We'll have how it can affect workers in Kentucky coming up on WKYT News at 4. Wall Street getting its biggest gain of the year today after news the Fed is reluctant to raise rates anytime soon. The Dow jumped 275 points to close at 16,994. The Nasdaq added 83 points and the S&P 500, 34. State money will not be used to build a biblically themed park unless the group behind the project changes its hiring process. A Kentucky tourism official says a recent job posting for Ark Encounter in northern Kentucky required applicants to provide salvation testimony and a statement on marriage and sexuality. An attorney for the park says the posting was not for Ark Encounter, but for a company that owns the park. 
The $172 million project in northern Kentucky includes a 500-foot replica of Noah's Ark. Walmart is cutting health insurance for some of its part-time employees. The world's biggest retailer says workers with fewer than 30 hours a week will no longer qualify for its health insurance plan. The company says the change will affect about 2% of its U.S. workforce of 1.3 million people. There are nearly 29,000 Walmart employees here in Kentucky. The Supreme Court is hearing arguments today about Amazon. Some former Amazon warehouse workers say they spent up to 25 minutes after every shift waiting to go through security to make sure they weren't stealing anything. The employees say they should get paid for the extra time. Coffee prices could be going up again. They're now at their highest level in two and a half years, mostly due to the drought in Brazil and concern about next year's crop. Brazil provides about one-third of the world's coffee, and the bean is used in many gourmet blends. That means prices could go up again. Starbucks, Maxwell House, and Folgers all raised their prices earlier this year. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about at the Kentucky Children's Garden where all kinds of creatures are coming to life this weekend. We'll have a preview of trees, trails, and creatures coming up here on WKYT. And as we roll our way closer and closer toward the weekend, I'm tracking a very soggy setup across central and eastern Kentucky. Wait until you see some of the rainfall numbers. That's when I get back in a moment.